Hello, so a few days ago I did a video on how to draw trees in winter and I said that it was going to be a two-part video and that I was going to finish the scene. So here it is, it's a snowy winter landscape with a black wolf in the foreground and these two are the trees that I started with in the original video. It was a very spontaneous drawing because initially I didn't really know uh, what, it what it was going to look like and I kept adding in elements and changing my composition as I went along. So this is the final result and I hope you like it. So please leave a comment and let me know what you think and also don't forget to subscribe because I'm always posting new content and there will be plenty uh, more videos. Now let me show you how I did this winter landscape with a lone black wolf. Enjoy! So what you're looking at now is the beginning of the drawing where I did these two trees and I'm not going to go into too much detail here because I already covered that in the first video so if you want to uh, see uh, the real-time footage of me drawing these snow-covered trees as well as some explanations um, you can watch that video I'm going to put the link in the description as well as in the end screen <clears throat> so I started out with these two trees and at this time I still didn't have a clear idea about what my scene was going to look like. I just knew that I wanted to create a winter landscape and I hadn't decided yet on the composition. I just placed these two trees slightly left of the center and decided to go from there. So once I finished that original video and um, did the tutorial on how to draw these winter trees I decided to move on with my scene and I realized that I'm going to need a lot more trees and to create depth and to create an illusion like there are a lot of trees there I realized that I needed to add some more trees in the background but as you can see I uh, am making those quite a bit lighter and less defined than the ones in front so it's almost like I'm creating suggestions of some trees in the back which will create an illusion of distance and depth and like there are a lot of trees behind behind the ones that I just drew and I also I'm also covering the rest of this area with my vine charcoal stick because I want that mid-tone all over this area and even though this looks scary at first when I just apply a uh, ton of charcoal like that. Vine charcoal can be blended very very easily. It's actually very soft and it can be manipulated very easily so you can see uh, with a paper towel or a tissue it's very easy to blend the vine charcoal smoothly. So now I'm just going to draw some more trees using the same approach that I used with the with the first two trees. I first draw the shape of a tree and the branches and once I'm happy with the shape of the tree I move on to the highlights which I'm going to pull with a kneaded eraser. So most of this, 
almost all of the scene was drawn using just two tools which are uh, a vine charcoal stick and a kneaded eraser. Later, as you will see, I will be using compressed charcoal in a woodless charcoal pencil as well. And I'll explain why I used that instead of the vine charcoal. So you can see that I did the same thing uh, as with the as with the other trees. I am drawing the snow or rather erasing the snow on these two trees to the left and you can see how much more contrast and detail there will be on them in comparison to those uh, silhouettes of trees in the in the background or suggestions of trees in the background. I just put those there to give the viewer the idea that they're looking at a forest of trees covered with snow. So here I decided that I needed more stuff in the background so I decided to put in a few mountains there as well. And I started drawing some mountain peaks and because my trees in the back are already not very well defined and kind of blurry. I wanted a kind of a, a slightly foggy scene. So I'm doing the same thing with the mountain peaks. I am not going to put too much detail into them, just some suggestions of mountain tops with just a little bit of uh, light shading. So I'm just uh, playing around with my vine charcoal and brushes trying to create some interesting shapes in the background and I also used a tutillion to try to uh, refine the shape of those mountain peaks and where I want to make the area a little bit lighter instead of using a kneaded eraser I can just use my paper towel to lift up a little bit of the vine charcoal and because uh, if I use a uh, kneaded eraser I will lift up almost all of it. What you see me doing now is drawing some snow. I want to, uh, want to make it look like it's snowing in my scene and I mostly did this with a kneaded eraser but I, have to, I had to keep reshaping it and remolding it uh, which was a long and tedious process because I needed to create a lot of these dots and I needed to vary uh, their shape and their size and their placement to make this as random and as realistic as possible so that I can create a nice uh, snowy winter scene. So you see the the top part of my landscape is almost done and now I have to finish uh, finish these trees or rather finish this row of trees which is going to be in the midground because uh, it was at this point that I decided that I also needed to put some stuff in the foreground and what I will put you will see in a few minutes and how I will, I will do it but for now I'm just continuing to work on my trees and doing pretty much the same thing that I did with the others but because I didn't want just uh, an even line there uh, a row of trees which would look kind of dull I decided to put some of the trees slightly in front of the others to break up that line and to make that uh, whole forest a little more interesting. So I put some of these trees in the front and then I put some of them in the back. And 
as before I first used the vine charcoal to create those uh, shapes of the trees and their branches and their uh, canopies if you can call them that because they are uh, clusters of needles covering their branches so I made a few of these here to the, to the right a little bit smaller like they're a little bit further away and after that I started working with my kneaded eraser again and I kept reshaping and remolding it over and over again so that I would be able to lift up as much of the charcoal as possible. Once again I already talked about the difference between the between vine charcoal and compressed charcoal. Uh, if I did these trees with compressed charcoal I could still lift up some of the charcoal and uh, create some contrast but it's a lot easier to do with vine charcoal. With vine charcoal you can even do a little bit of erasing just using your finger or a clean paper towel. You can actually lift up a lot of that charcoal dust. So I'm just erasing these portions uh, following the structure and the shape of the tree, following the shape of those branches to make it look like snow fell on those branches and in the places in between the branches and near the trunk there is no snow so uh, these, uh, these parts of the tree are a little bit darker and I'm doing the same thing with the other trees and I'm also going to be adding some more trees behind these as well to create more depth of course once I finish with this front row so I'm adding more trees here in the back or just suggestions of trees or tops, tree tops in the back to make it look like there are a lot of trees there and now we have something that looks like a forest or a forest of snow covered trees I also made some of these tops a little bit darker than others just to create some variation and now at this point I had to put something in the foreground and I decided to do a drawing of a wolf and of course I uh, decided to draw a black wolf because a black wolf would give me a nice contrast with my uh, white snowy background. Now the thing is that originally I was thinking about placing the animal to the right that's why I created that slope over there to the right but I actually changed my mind uh, because I decided that it would be a much better idea to put the wolf on the left side and then put some tracks behind it uh, leading away to, to, to that slope uh, like the wolf came down from there so that gave me an opportunity to create almost like a like a small story within my drawing and make my winter scene a lot more interesting. So these are some of the things that you have to think about when you're uh, developing your composition. Uh, normally it's a good idea to to work out the composition before you start drawing but that doesn't necessarily have to be the case every single time sometimes you can just start drawing and adding in elements and maybe changing their place and uh, developing your scene as you go along until you're happy with the position of the elements and until you're happy with the, uh, with your composition and the thing is that wine charcoal is actually perfect for this because 
like I said, it's so easy to erase and move around. So if you want to modify certain things, if there's any medium that's good for that, that would be Vine Charcoal. As you can see, I created that sketch of uh, Wolf. I wanted it to look like it's uh, walking very slowly and uh, cautiously. Like it's following a trail or something. And now I picked up a woodless charcoal pencil. And the woodless charcoal pencil is compressed charcoal. It's uh, harder and it's darker and it's a lot less difficult to... It's a lot more difficult actually to erase, but it's, it's quite a bit darker. And the reason why I picked a woodless charcoal pencil rather than vine charcoal, which is what I was working with uh, up to this point, was because uh, I, I wanted more detail, I wanted more precision and I also wanted uh, I wanted more value, I wanted something darker in the foreground and I wanted to create more texture and more contrast here in the foreground which is why I thought that a charcoal pencil uh, rather than a vine charcoal stick would be a lot more appropriate for the drawing of the animal in the foreground. So you can see that the wolf is coming along nicely and even though uh, it's a slightly smaller drawing uh, it's not as, detail, as detailed as for example when I'm doing a portrait uh, of an animal or just uh, drawing uh, an animal where I'm focusing on the animal itself rather than the background. Uh, still, I decided to put in as much detail into the wolf as possible, so I had to pay attention to things like uh, the direction of the fur and the length of the fur and the usual things that you have to keep in mind when you're drawing animals. And you can see that once I started blending with a brush, this all started to look a lot nicer because uh, the patience with applying those strokes in the direction of the fur really start paying off once you start uh, blending with a brush because even though the brush softens these strokes and makes them a little bit less defined they don't all get blended in some of the texture and some of those lines are still visible and uh, that help us that helps us to create uh, a, a realistic appearance of the fur so I'll just keep blending that and by the way the brush that I'm using is a very stiff hard uh, bristle brush which is also pretty short so it's actually blending very nicely and, uh, pu and it's pushing the charcoal into the grain of the paper so that's another thing to keep in mind is that after this work done with the brush it will be a little bit difficult to erase uh, highlights but I'm still going to be able to pull some highlights on the on the fur as well, of the wolf and now you can see that I'm using my brush and my tutilians to uh, create some variation in the snow to do a little bit a little bit of shading on that snow uh, so that I can uh, create an illusion of uh, of some uh, rough surface rough uh, terrain and uh, I'm uh, making some of these uh, s some of these uh, portions of that snow covered uh, ground a little bit lighter and others a little bit darker and you can also see that I decided to add I decided to add a few uh, dried uh, blades of dried grass or bushes 
to break the monotony of that snow so that the foreground wouldn't look too dull and also to create more depth and distance in my drawing the reason why I'm making the snow darker a little bit here around the wolf is to create some suggestions of a shadow under the wolf and I also I did a little bit of work on the wolf's face because initially it looked kind of <laughs> tired and pensive. I, I wanted to, I wanted it to look menacing, so I kind of changed its expression a little bit. And here you can see me adding some highlights on the fur. And um, if some of these highlights don't seem very consistent with the light source you have to remember that there will, there will also be a lot of reflected light from the ground that's why some of these hairs around the neck and the chest are a little bit lighter so soon I'm going to be moving on to the right side of the foreground But first, I just had to add a few snowflakes here in front of the wolf as well because we want to stay consistent with the upper portion of our drawing because obviously uh, it's snowing so I have to show snow wherever I can, wherever I can get enough contrast even though most of these snowflakes won't be visible against the white background but here and there I was able to uh, draw, draw a snowflake or two. Now moving on to the rest of the foreground again, uh, trying to create some suggestions of uh, uh, some shapes in that snow and some variation in that terrain. varying the amount of value but it's mostly fairly light because it's snow I'm just making some bits uh, darker a little bit and um, trying to lift up a little bit here and there to try to uh, stay consistent with the light source more or less even though snow can sometimes be confusing in that respect but anyway I decided to add a little more dry grass here a few more blades of dry grass and there in the background as well maybe a few suggestions of some dirt or grass here and there and finally I decided to add some tracks in the snow to show where the wolf came from and he came from he came down from uh, from that slope to the right and of course I made the tracks closer to the wolf a little bit larger and further uh, with a little bit more distance in between them and then I made them smaller and closer to one another as I uh, moved further into the distance so here the drawing is done and I'm signing it I hope you like the way this scene turned out and I hope you'll also check out my tutorials on how to draw trees covered in snow. I'm going to put some links in the description where you can check out some of my other uh, videos and I'll also put some links uh, in the end screen as well. Thanks for watching. Bye.